Welcome to this quick start tutorial for V-Ray for Revit. In this video, we'll be taking a look at getting started with using V-Ray for Revit and getting familiar with how to get productive. We'll start with a sample scene already installed alongside Revit. Start by opening a project inside Revit and navigate to C, Program Files, Autodesk, the version of Revit you're using, Samples folder, and open the file RAC basic sample project file. Once the scene is open, open the V-Ray tab. We'll start off by rendering a view we have. Click on the From Yard view to bring that up. Click here to disable shadows to speed things up a bit in Revit. Now let's render a quick version of this view to fine tune our settings. First thing you'll notice is that the Revit interface locks out the controls for plugins while you're in a perspective view. So I'm going to switch back to the title page view and you'll see the controls are active again. This is true for all plugins in Revit and is normal behavior. For a real time render of the yard view, select the from yard entry in the project views to set it as the current view and go ahead and leave the quality set to Draft for now. Now click on Resolution here in the V-Ray tab. You can select from the preset resolutions or enter your own or use Crop Region which is similar to Revit's existing functionality. Let's use the 800 by 450 preset. Next you can toggle artificial lights on or off by clicking this icon. We'll leave them off. Next, we can choose our environment light to use a V-Ray Sun or a dome light. With dome lights, for example, you can use image-based lighting, which we'll cover in more detail later in the video. And of course, you can turn off environment lighting as well by clicking this icon. We'll use the Sun for now with its current Revit settings. Now, I'll move the window to the side of my screen to make a little bit more space to work with here. You can set off a render pretty quickly. Click on Render with V-Ray icon and here you can choose Render with V-Ray RT to start a real-time rendering of the from yard view that we selected earlier. This is called the V-Ray Frame Buffer or VFB. Let's go ahead and stop the render. First off, let's replace this grass, which means we'll use the Material Browser. Now, all materials from Revit are already supported with V-Ray, which is good as we don't need to set up new materials necessarily, although V-Ray materials can offer more power and possibilities with your renders. I'm going to locate a grass material here in the filter box, and uh, here we go, it displays in the Material Browser. The Autogen means it is using a Revit material. I'm going to switch it to a V-Ray material instead, bringing up a browser to load a material from my folder called greengrassdark.vrmat. You'll find that material in the assets you can download for this tutorial. Now, like Revit materials, you're going to want to set a size for width and height. And since this is a pretty big map, I'll use 10,000 by 10,000 millimeters and I'll just randomly pick a rotation with the slider. Go ahead and close the browser now. Now one more thing on the settings icon before we get started. V-Ray RT takes full advantage of CUDA hardware rendering on NVIDIA graphics cards, one of which I have installed. If you have a strong NVIDIA GPU, go ahead and select the GPU CUDA option here, otherwise you can e easily leave it at CPU. Click on Render V-Ray with RT to fire it up. There are a few things I'd like to change before the final rendering. Let's change the location of our view by moving the camera around. With the window to the side, I can see the rendering while still able to work my settings. Let's go back to the From Yard view. Go ahead and press ZE to zoom extents to make this easier. And then open up the navigation wheel and orbit the view. As I do, you can see how RT updates the render pretty quickly. Go ahead and settle on a view you like. I'm going to settle here in my view, checking RT to see the render result as I go. Now, I'll close the wheel and address the sun angle next. 
Here in the properties, I'll scroll down to the camera heading and click edit to open the render settings. Changes I make here will affect the render in real time. Click on the sun settings button here, which will bring up the window. Let's change the time from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. and click apply. And you'll see RT update to a more afternoon light. We can also change the time of year. That's pretty handy. Let's click OK to get out of here and we'll get into using an HDR next for something a little more photoreal. HDR image is, of course, high dynamic range image that can give an exquisite result in lighting and reflections. I'll need to exit my perspective view, for example, to my title sheet, to gain access to my icons again. Click on the V-Ray Sun icon to access environmental light and switch it to the dome light. The RT render updates and you can see the dome light evenly lighting the scene with a single color specified by the dome color swatch. We'll replace that with an HDR image by clicking the Use HDR Image checkbox and you'll see the VFB update immediately to show the new environment. You can browse for any panoramic HDR or EXR image that you have. There's plenty available online to download for free, so it's easy to find an environment that fits your needs. Use the rotation value here to orient the environment to your satisfaction. This in turn moves the sun in the image, which will of course change the lighting angle in the scene. I'm going to settle on 145 degrees for a pretty nice look. Now, I'll make my adjustments to my camera. Click on the camera icon to open the camera settings. I'll increase the exposure to brighten the image, and I can also adjust the white balance to find the right look. Click on the effects button. Here you can set camera effects like depth of field with the defocus and focus distance controls. I've set my focus distance to the back of the building right now. RT is updating the VFB window as we go and as we adjust the blur. I'll go ahead and turn it off by changing defocus back to zero and make uh, instead a bit of a vignette just here in the corners. Now let's go and set our render quality to high. Change the resolution to 1280 by 720 and we'll also switch from RT to the production render and when we click, here we go. As you can see, the render starts filling in. Once we get past the earlier passes, we can begin changing and fine tuning some adjustments without really needing to pull the image into Photoshop. And this is while the render continues progressively to get a cleaner and cleaner result the longer it runs. In the VFB, I'll open up the show corrections control and I'll be able to fine tune things like the exposure of the image by turning on exposure and manipulating its slider. Now let's adjust the white balance away from being too warm and you can play with the saturation and hue levels with these controls as well. As a matter of fact, there's a lot of control for level and curves like you would have in Photoshop. I'll curve the image a little bit here and then you can check it on and off to toggle to see the difference. I'll go ahead and leave it off and allow the progressive render to continue cleaning up the image for a little while longer. And because this is a progressive render, meaning it will continue to clean up the image as you allow the render to continue, you can click on the track mouse while rendering icon and place the cursor around these railings here. This tells V-Ray to concentrate on that area for cleanup before moving out to other areas of the image if you want one part of that image to resolve sooner than the rest. Okay. So at this point, our image is resolved pretty nicely. Go ahead and click the stop sign icon to halt the render when you're happy with the image quality. Now that the render is done, there are a few ways that you can save it. One way is directly from the VFB by clicking the save button and selecting any of these image formats. We'll select PNG here. Another way to save out the rendered image is to actually close the frame buffer and the application actually keeps a version of the file saved in the project gallery. Select the view from the yard that you rendered and it will give you a history of all the renderings from that view. 
Just click the icon here to save it to disk as one of these image formats. You could also click this icon to save it to the project. By default, Revit will try to overwrite the existing view, as you can see here in the list. So just choose No, and it will create a new view under Renderings, as you can see here. And there it is. It's now in your project. And it's available to drag it out onto your sheet here, for example, all ready to go. Thanks for joining us on this quick start video for V-Ray for Revit. Uh -huh.